namo bhagavate vasudevaya om 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 namo bhagavate vasudevaya Welcome everyone to the third part of the Bhakti Essential course. I'm personally very encouraged and even inspired uh, by receiving your feedback. And uh, yes, for those who join us, the Bhakti Essential course is a level one course on Bhakti which is meant to spark your journey, your spiritual journey, but also for those who are already practicing to refresh your bhakti by laying deep fundaments. Uh, in this uh, course, Bhakti Essentials, we are attempting to bring the beautiful teachings to of bhakti alive, but more than anything, uh, to give a practical access uh, to bhakti by mm, wonderful experiences. So, in the last or previous sessions, we were talking about identity. That's the start of any spiritual journey. You have to know who you are. Uh, and then we talked about divinity, the goal. Bhakti is what brings these two together. There's a very, very um, educative um, hand gesture, a so-called mudra, which is used in the uh, spiritual traditions of India and also in bhakti. It's this one, uh, known as the Jnana Mutra. I will show it a little bit around. If you want, you can also make it the index finger representing the individual self is joined to the thumb, which represents the uh, spiritual truth, the supreme divinity. And in this uh, way, a circle is closed, a circle which at once helps the practitioner to overcome the big three. These are the binding forces to material existence, action, inaction and balance. In short, the binding forces. Uh, the bondage can be stopped uh, by mm, bringing the individual self uh, in contact through yoga with the Supreme Self. In a bhakti, the yoga is the yoga of love and devotion, which 
uh, totally frees the self from its entanglement in uh, the material uh, bondage. This is uh, something I find uh, always uh, very inspiring. In bhakti, the union, the yoga, uh, happens through love. Mm, I cannot fail to say how this is a universal principle that appears in various names and various forms throughout the history of mankind. Mm, while it was on the search for meaning, for, mm, um, on the search for the higher connection. Mm, by sincerely and honestly entering a union with the divine, who is the center of all that is, one awakens the greatest potential that is lying dormant in the heart. Mm, uh, the experience of boundless divine love, <laughs> or bhakti, or prema. I want to tell you today about a meeting that I had with one of my friends a little while ago. He had come from a retreat in Yalta, that's at the Black Seas, which was organized by a group of doctors, doctors of psychology. There were around 1,100 participants and uh, they came from very uh, various backgrounds, lawyers, uh, doctors, um, entrepreneurs, that type of people. And uh, what was important is they had each morning a meditation session, but from a different spiritual tradition. So sometimes there was Buddhistic meditation, at other times there were Christian forms of coming in contact with the Supreme, etc. Now, on one morning, my friend told me, they were all surprised because they were guided into uh, the dance of the whirling dervishes, a uh, Sufi dance. Mm, you must be knowing that for the Sufi, the uh, love-intoxicated person, uh, dancing in a circular motion is a means of coming in contact with the Supreme. Okay, so you can imagine doctors, <laughs> psychologists, um, stars <laughs> trying to keep in balance while they were swirling around. Then the second dance, and that was important for my friend to tell, was a group dance where they were as a group making a circle around and they were all said before we start you should imagine to focus on uh, uh, God who is in the center of the circle. So they were dancing and dancing, dancing, dancing with certain mm, prescribed motions. It was going faster and then all of a sudden at a time which was not announced the dance stopped and they were uh, told to please look into the eyes of each other. My friend told me that is where the energy shifted. That is where there was a total, total catharsis. Um, and I want to read what he said, me, said to me. He said, as we were looking into each other's eyes, we suddenly felt a charge of the strongest ever felt love. Yes, a pure, selfless love that we genuinely felt 
uh, for each other. He said, just imagine th this. The men and women were complete strangers to each other. They all started to cry, cry out of love. And he said, whomever I saw, I felt that there was this unexplainable, deep, genuine love for them. It was love coming from deep within myself with utmost strength. I had never felt something so, so sublime. Now remember, my friend is a communicator. He knows, as we say in German, God und die Welt, God and the world, uh, everything. And he, now he asked me, can you explain to me what had happened? Now, I happen to have given many lectures in universities, so I have also studied the various wisdom traditions, and I do know uh, what Sufism is all about. They focus uh, on uh, the Supreme uh, uh, Lord with the unlimited amount of names. And, uh, and that is what they had done in the beginning. They had built a center around one uh, spiritual uh, um, uh, reality. I wanted to say they have made a circle around him and put uh, him into the center. And then they took that with them um, into their dance, which was oriented towards that supreme center, if you so wish. And then only they looked at each other and experienced an amount of overwhelming love that my, my friend told me. He, had, uh, he still is in contact with three of the people who were there in that circle. That he said it was an overwhelming experience of divine love, something which came from a place beyond this world. And this is exactly what is bhakti. My friend had come in contact with bhakti, that universal principle. It's already there in the heart. We just need to turn to the Lord of bhakti, and then it is coming out. Now, we all, I think, have the feeling that we carry inside something which we do not yet know. This is a good feeling. We carry this universal love uh, within us, this, let me say, divine love uh, with us, which is at once the greatest power you can find in this universe, the power which is big victorious over darkness, I want to say, that, that, that the, uh, uh, let me say, the feelings of anger or enviousness or uh, what have you not, illusion, mm, that is sleeping, it is lying dormant. And I find this is something which um, you please <laughs> consider for a moment. In bhakti, you don't have to become something. You don't have to uh, morph into something that you are not yet, but that is a uh, more ideal version of yourself. No. In bhakti, you just have to discover what is already dormantly lying within you. Uh, that divine... I love. Uh, let me give you an example. See, here is a small piece of wood. What I will do now is I will just help that the fire, which is already dormant in the wood, is brought out. This is the idea of bhakti, to bring out what is already there. Now, once 
Bhakti starts to rise in the heart. It is almost like something like a sunrise in the morning. You, feel, you will feel uh, two things. An increasing amount of uh, spiritual enlightenment or love. And you will also see that the darkness, the inner darkness, goes away uh, from you. Therefore, the rise of bhakti is often compared with the rise of fire or the sun or the moon, uh, you know, whatever light you can imagine. My spiritual master mm, once said uh, that mm, the unity between the soul and God remember this gesture, <laughs> um, starts to rise in the heart and then it emanates to all beings unconditionally. Um, the love, in other words, spills over from the heart and goes to other uh, living entities. And, and he wrote something very nicely and encouraging. He said, our loving propensity expands just as the vibration of light or air expands. Bhakti is the science of loving every single one of the living entities perfectly by the easy method of loving the divine. Any trace of separateness, in other words, is overcome. And bliss, the bliss of ecstatic love uh, of God arises in the heart. Once again, how does this happen? The principle here. First, there's the divine connection. And then is the connection to all other living entities who are emanations from that divine uh, supreme uh, truth. So when the Sufis put in their huge dancing circles the mm, uh, 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 divinity, uh, when Buddhists uh, meditate about their uh, deities. In Berlin, we have a beautiful uh, Buddhistic temple with a huge Lord Buddha who holds in his hands the divine gifts for humanity, like tolerance, balance, compassion, etc. Or when Hindus sing Kirtan, where they glorify, uh, it is, uh, if they do it deeply enough, they do it with focus, they come to that divine force within the heart, that, that uh, uh, bhakti that arises like the fire arises from the wood. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> uh, now, when you turn in bhakti, to the Supreme, there is something like a divine reciprocation. And it is this divine reciprocation, let us call it an investment that comes from above, or like one of the saints I know in India says, it's like a waterfall which comes from above and falls into the lake of your heart. No? When that comes, uh, you are actually uh, above and beyond yourself. You're lifted to the transcendental platform by that shakti, that energy, that divine investment, that grace. So bhakti, uh, which is ignited uh, from the potential form by uh, uh, simply turning towards 
the, the center of our being, the, the, uh, towards the divine, huh? that bhakti uh, uh, fires you up and, and uh, invokes a surge of spiritual energy within you. You know, in the bhakti tradition, there is a lot of uh, scripture, uh, wisdom teachings. And there's one work, it's the Matara Shruti, which describes in four lines the power of bhakti. And I would like to read this to you. It's a hymn, so to say. Bhakti brings one to the Supreme. Bhakti reveals the divine. Bhakti attracts the divine. Yes, bhakti is the strongest power. It conquers the beloved. Once I met a yoga teacher in the UK. We became friends over the years. He teaches uh, yoga asanas, pranayama, breathing techniques, meditation, and so on. And when we had become a little bit closer, he said, uh, you seem to be so blissful always when I see you. Uh, what do you do with your mind? Is that also restless? And I said, I'm not someone special. What is special is the pulling force. He said, what's that? I said, see, in yoga where we master asanas or sitting posture, where we try to regulate the breath and direct our mind towards stillness, we go on our own steam. With our own effort, we are trying to reach mastery. But in bhakti, another shakti works. In yoga, the pushing, the effort, the abhyasa is the Sanskrit word, is important. In bhakti, the pulling force is important. And I told him, when I was a little boy, restless and naughty, like all, most boys. Uh, I had one um, uh, particular sport. I would wait for a truck um, or trucks who climbed up the hill. When they were on top of the hill, they were quite slow. And I was there with my little red bicycle. And I grabbed and held onto the truck. And then it picked up speed and went very far, and I was uh, riding along, not on my own steam, not on my own power. I was riding on another power. I was going, I don't know, 70 kilometers an hour, or 80, I, I, I don't know how far, uh, but it was fast, it was fast, faster than I could uh, ever uh, dream to go. This is the pulling power. Pushing power is limited because our energy is limited. The pulling power of the divine is unlimited because he has unlimited power. This is what I told my yoga teacher friend and he was, I remember, he really looked at me with eyes. Wow, that's profound. Um, so, uh, let us go on. I want to bring you soon into an experience. Uh, bhakti 
has two aspects. That's important to understand. First, it's a feeling of divine connection. You call that the Bhakti Sambandha. Sambandha. Then, Bhakti is also an activity or practice. In Sanskrit, there are various words for this. Um, Abhideya Tattva, you could say. Or you could say uh, the two forms of bhakti is the bhava rupa bhakti. Bhakti is a bhava, a, a deep feeling of divine connection. And it also has a chesta rupa bhakti, the form of, of a practice. So uh, today I would like to talk just a little bit uh, how to enter into the into bhakti as a bhava, as a feeling of divine connection. And in the coming sessions, um, uh, we will talk about practices, bhakti practices. But we wish to go very systematic so that you can really make the experience based on deep foundations. Um, so, all right, bhakti as a feeling Mm, of divine connection. Um, the Bhakti tradition explains that in our purely spiritual existence, God is the object of our love and affection. And we are objects of his love and affection. Uh, I think this gesture portrays it so nicely. There's a circle, a circle which is through so which the energy of bhakti flows. Uh, but as we are in this world, forgetful of this spiritual reality, we have also forgotten about this circle of bhakti. We have forgotten our true identity, and you know when self is lost, all is lost, and we have forgotten the divine. Um, thus, we are actually looking in bhakti for a rediscovery of uh, our uh, spiritual heart. What is this? According to the bhakti perspective, we have three hearts, not one. The first heart is the heart which is the pump, which moves the blood through our body. The second heart is the emotional heart, where we feel feelings of affection, but also of anger, where we feel loss and gain. Uh, it's uh, Mm, mm, an emotional heart. But beyond that, there is the third heart, the heart where we uh, can actually have a divine realization, a divine spiritual perception, a divine union. And that's the third heart, the heart which you had before you were born. It's the heart which you will have after you are dead, the body is dead. It's your eternal spiritual heart, the greatest treasure. And to rediscover and revive that is the uh, ultimate purpose of, of, the, of the bhakti practice. There is where you are, there is where the uh, divine self is, the supreme being. There's eternity, everything is there. Are you? <laughs> uh, so how do we revive our spiritual heart then? Bhakti teaches us that to revive our spiritual heart, we need to enter into a relationship of giving and receiving uh, love in relationship to the Supreme, in relationship to God. Once you enter 
into this, uh, something will happen. I would like to give you an example. In the Second World War, Europe's borders were really changed. And uh, very often, uh, children were taken away from home and brought to the other countries. I know a lot of children from Romania were taken into Germany. And then a government agent, uh, this is in modern times, understood this is cruel, and they made an attempt to bring the separated families together. There's one story which I wish to share with you. It's about a child who came when it was very small to uh, Germany and uh, fast forward became a, a bank director in Frankfurt. So he contacted the government agency uh, and uh, somehow they found out where his village was, where the street was and where uh, the house was where his uh, parents lived. So he comes to Romania. He brings some flowers with him. He's very, very excited. He goes into the village. He looks around. Nothing looks familiar to him. And he finds, with the help of the villagers, the address. Uh, he knocks at the door. Nothing. He knocks louder and he hears some uh, feet coming closer. The door open, opens and he looks into the face of the person he had only seen as a baby like this. But the, somehow a fast recognition came in into him. He's, he opened his arms and said, Father! And the old man looks at him and uh, says, Son! And a cascade of tears comes from both of them. The bank director gives his father the flowers, pushes him uh, in his uh, uh, so, uh, not pushes, embraces him, uh, and, and they feel a research of, of that love. In just the same way, we who feel separated, we feel, we imagine to be separated from God, will be, feel a sense of overwhelming love coming from a recognition, if you so wish, when we engage in turning towards him. It's that simple. It's already there. So I would like to uh, say in the Gita, what the Gita says, if you offer me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. Let's be practical. Do something that brings you in contact with the Lord. Like here, I've taken a candle. I could take a fruit, a flower, something to drink, fresh water. And then I take this in the, in the conscious, consciousness is very, important in a conscious move and turn towards the divine. At home I can have a little home altar. This is a little home altar and I can just bring it there. And in this way a bhakti will arise in me. Mm. Uh, uh, I can encourage you, build a small holy corner, <laughs> an altar in your home. Place a picture of divinity, Krishna, Ram, Govinda, Buddha, um, other forms or symbols that represent the divinity and then enter into a, 
connection by offering something, something from this world. Uh, and that will help you to grow bhakti. Good. I want to now lead you into the experience of bhakti. Uh, a guided meditation. Enter the divine connection. Mm. I request you, wherever you are looking at this, except you're driving, then it's good to park at the side of the road. So just Stop for a moment to make an experience in bhakti. Sit tall with spine erect. Calm your thoughts and arrive in your body. Feel the sensation of touching either the floor, if you sit on the floor, or the backrest of your chair. Feel the sensation. If you want, you can make the Jnana Mudra by bringing the index finger to your thumb. Symbolizing connection. Bring your palm and rest them on the, your knees and thighs. And breathe. Deeply. Take a deep inhale. And a deep exhale. In and out. If any distracting thoughts should arise, let them come and let them pass. Return your attention always to your breathing. Conscious breathing. Breathing where you are aware that you breathe. Now, bring your attention to the heart. Go inside to that luminous heart space. Fully arrive. Be present. It is there deep within the heart, the core of the heart, where the true self and God reside. Mm. 
now. Move further. Seek an active connection by meditating about two simple truths. In my true identity, I am eternal, full of inner knowing and divine love. The Supreme is an infinite loving being he is my eternal well-wisher he is closer than the best of friends and if you like You may offer devotional prayer. My dear Lord Govinda, although I have forgotten you for so long in this world, today I am turning to you. Please accept me. Stay in this space and let bhakti arise. When you are ready, please end this meditation by returning slowly to room awareness. what you practice now that is what you become this is an ancient saying but bhakti can sometimes happen so quickly that it is not in the distant future it can be contacted like my friend told me when he was in Yalta at the Black Sea at that conference for growth. But still I would request you to practice something. I want to give you exercises for the coming week up till next Tuesday that you will also find uh, on, on the Facebook. Um, exercises that will help you um, to incorporate bhakti in your daily life. There's one important point. Yes, you can practice bhakti in your daily life. See, those who are into external pleasures, 
or to enjoy selflessly and sadly, sometimes mindlessly, the world. They, they look at the world with the idea, how can I find enjoyment? A beginner on the spiritual path looks away from the world. No, this is illusion, this is Maya. A bhakti yoga, yogi, however, looks beyond this world. He or she connects uh, the material and the spiritual world, if you want to call them like this, by offering from this world something to the Lord. So my simple recommendation for you is begin your day when you wake up in the morning. Seek to establish the divine connection uh, by starting to gratefully thank uh, for the opportunity of this human form of life, which is a huge opportunity to grow. Then during the day, uh, take any activity uh, that can be offered to the Supreme Lord. And before you begin this activity, offer it consciously to the Supreme. It's for you. So before you st start a spiritual, so-called spiritual activity, like meditation, kirtan, acts of seva, reading or so on, just become mindful for a moment and say, I'm, I'm doing this for you. If you do something to benefit others in the world, before you start, turn first to the Supreme and then you will energize everything with that divine force of bhakti. At the uh, end of your day, before you fall asleep, take a, just a moment and uh, do something like, like praying or meditating mm. or just by expressing a desire, I wish to be connected to you. These three exercises, morning, during the day and the end of the day, turning and offering uh, to the Supreme will let the Bhakti Shakti rise in your life. <laughs> yes. Good. Uh, I have to be a little fast because our time, I respect your time. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, we will post the recordings of the guided meditation that we did this evening. Uh, tomorrow morning, Wednesday, on my Facebook uh, so that you can practice it. Uh, again, if you like. And then if you practice it a few times, you can do it without listening to the recording. You will have the points and, and do them. Uh, uh, in our next session, Bhakti Essentials Part 2, we are already in part or approaching Part 4. Uh, Bhakti Essentials Part 4, I have to correct myself, on July 28th, we will discuss the deities of bhakti. That will be quite something. And then, starting with Bhakti Essentials Part 5, that's August 4, we will start to explore the main limbs of bhakti yoga, like kirtan, meditation, um, uh, uh, the art of spiritual association, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, I have been asked by people, well, we just came in and started with Bhakti Essentials apart so and so. Where are the previous sessions? You can find all the Bhakti Essential programs on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, they are all there for you to either. Uh, get to know them or to just refresh them. At the end, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. 
it is such a privilege, such a genuine joy to be with you and mm, present these very enlivening uh, subjects. And see you hopefully next Tuesday. Uh, Haribol.